888-835-2414. This is Learning with Leslie. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Learning with Leslie, the podcast where we focus on having an impact from home, at home, and beyond. No, I'm not talking about the kind of impact that's here today and gone tomorrow. I'm talking about the kind that will last no matter what happens. I'm your host, Leslie Samuel from IamLeslieSamuel.com, where we're changing the world one person at a time. And as usual, I have another exciting episode for you today. In today's episode, episode 401, we're going to be talking about how blogging as we know it is dead thanks to artificial intelligence or AI. Man, are you seeing all of the developments that are happening in the world of AI and does it kind of concern you or freak you out? Are you concerned with how quickly things just seem to be developing in this world of AI? Uh, Are you wondering what you should be doing, what actions you should take because of all that's happening as an entrepreneur in this new era. Well, in that, this is the episode for you. In this episode, I'm gonna talk about some of my experiences with AI, where I see things going, and what you should be doing as an entrepreneur. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Man, I, listen, I am so excited right now. I gotta tell you why I'm excited. I'm excited because this episode is late. It's being published late, right? I attempted to record this episode last night. And listen, listen, let me tell you. I I I did an amazing 48 minutes of a podcast episode last night. And I have this button here, right? This button, I press it to record and then I press it to end the recording. And at the end of the 40 not 48 minutes of like a ridiculous amount of value, I press the button. And then I notice it was recording. And I was like, wait a minute, why is it recording? So I stopped the recording and realized that at the beginning, I didn't hit record. Listen, when that happened, I was like, oh my goodness, I just spent all this time and effort and energy working on this thing and I didn't even hit record. And I was tempted, I was tempted to, to, to be upset and to, to get down because of all the work I had put in. And then I, I told myself something. I shifted my perspective for a quick second. And I said, you know what? This just means that when I redo it tomorrow, it's going to be that much better. It is going to be on a different level because I had an amazing practice round last night. Listen, it was so easy to go, possibly go to that negative place of, oh man, you know what? Forget this foolishness. Uh, Why does this happen? It's happened before and yet, yet. but I told myself, no, I'm going to use this to make tomorrow when I record it to make that even better and provide you with even more value. Here's the lesson that I got to share at the beginning of this episode that has nothing to do with AI, but maybe it has a whole lot to do with AI. We'll see how that unfolds. It's not what happens to you. It's what you choose to do with what happens to you that matters. It's not what happens to you. It's what you choose to do with what happens to you that matters. Your response, your response to the situations and the scenarios that you find yourself in, your response to the developments that are happening is what's going to make the difference between success and failure, between joy and sorrow, between defeat and success. Listen, oh man, yo, somebody needed to hear that today. So I hope that was you, but we're going to get into this topic because we're talking about something that I truly believe is changing the game in so many ways. And we're going to dig into how exactly 
this is happening and what we should be doing, what you should be doing as a result. Before I do that, I gotta let you know that this episode is brought to you literally and emotionally. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. By Ecamm Live. Ecamm Live is an all-in-one platform, the quickest and easiest way to produce professional videos without having to spend a bunch of time editing. This is how I'm doing what I'm doing today, and when I'm done, I am done. It's awesome. Check it out. If you use the link ecamm.com slash Leslie and you use the, the promo code Leslie, that's going to save you 15% off whatever purchase you make. Yo, we got to get into today's episode. And I'll tell you a little more about Ecamm Live a little later on in this episode. But for right now, let's dive in. Okay, story time with Leslie. I had an experience a few weeks ago. Now, uh, for a little bit of background, I'm somewhat of a uh, <laughs> a smart home uh, fanatic to a certain extent. Not extreme, but just to give you an example, when it's time for me to record a, a video podcast, when it's time for me to do that, I am basically coming into my office and there's a button on my uh, desktop that I click. And when I click that button, let me tell you what happens. I have video lights, one here, one in front of me, one to the left, and one to the right. Those turn on automatically. I have three cameras. Those three cameras will turn on automatically. My Rodecaster Pro for audio is gonna turn on. My backdrop lighting is going to turn on. The, the lights in the office themselves, that's going to turn off. And I am ready to record my video. If I'm about to jump on a Zoom call or whatever the case might be, I click that button, I'm ready, and I have professional video. Within, like, two seconds, I like to set things up so that uh, one click can do amazing things. Now, I... I wanted to kind of push that a little bit. So I wanted, to <laughs> okay, it's gonna sound, it's gonna sound like I'm really, like really into this stuff and I kind of am, but I wanted to be able to press one button and depending on when I press it, different things are gonna happen. So let me explain. If it, if it was, bef if it's before 7.30 a.m., I want my office lights to come on because in my office is where I do my morning routine and I just want the regular lights to come on. If it's after 7.30, I want my office lights to sh turn off if they're on because 7.30 is when I exercise in my gym in the garage. So I want the garage lights to turn on and the TV to turn on because I use uh, different programs on the TV for my exercise routine. Now, if it is after nine o'clock, that's when I get to work. So pressing that same button, I wanted to turn on the office lights and the stuff that I need for my work. And if I'm in my office and those lights are already on, I want the same button to set up my video scene <laughs> so that I can get to video. And if my video scene is on and I press it, okay, it's a really complicated shortcut using the shortcut app, but it takes a lot of programming, programming that I didn't know how to do. So what do I do? I went to Google and I started looking around, but quite frankly, no one was doing exactly what I wanted to do because this is a very specific situation. So I went to YouTube and I started watching videos. It gave me somewhat of an idea of some of the things that I could do, but it just wasn't, it didn't cut it. So I decided to go to chat GPT. Now let me, oh, I should pull this up. Let me tell you about my experience doing it with ChatGPT. So I'm gonna come into ChatGPT right now. Oh, I should have connected. I'm using Ecamm Live. I could have shown you this, but I didn't think about this part. Um, I am gonna search for shortcuts because um, that's what I was trying to set up. Okay, so I went to ChatGPT and I told ChatGPT, how do you create shortcuts on iOS that are dependent on the time of day? So it gave me some instructions and I said, I want to create this shortcut, but when I set it, it checks for what time it is. If it's before a certain time, it'll cause a certain action. If it's after a certain time, it will trigger another action. 
it gave me the steps. And I started doing the steps and I started running into issues because I didn't know exactly how to do some of the things that it was telling me to do. So here's what I do. Pay attention to this. Here's what I did. I took a screenshot of what I had done so far and I uploaded it and I said, this is what I have so far. Am I doing it right? What should be in the variable name field? And then it said, you're on the right track with your shortcuts so far. After the format date action, you're correct, you've correctly set a variable to store the formatted time. Here is how you should proceed. And it tells me based on what I showed it that I had done, what the next step was to be like. And I continued on as I was walking through the process. I continued taking screenshots and saying, okay, this is what I got. How is it looking? And, and okay, this is where I am. And then I said, how am I doing so far? It tells me you're doing well. You have the current time captured and stored in a variable and you've set up your specific time values. Here's what to do. Listen, let me tell you, I did not know how to do this. YouTube wasn't cutting it for me. Google wasn't cutting it for me. When I went to Google, I got a bunch of websites with a bunch of different ads and it was so difficult to navigate. But using this AI tool, it was able to give me instructions and then look at what I was doing, analyze what I was doing, comparing, compare it to what I was trying to do and guide me along the way. And that blew my mind. I want you to think about things that you're not sure how to do. You have to set up a website and you're not sure you can hire an expensive expert or whatever the case might be, but maybe you don't have the funds. Well, what if you had an AI tool that could give you the instructions you needed on how to do it and then correct you and guide you along the way? Another example, I was doing something in Pro Tools. That's a program that I use for recording music because I do biology music videos to make biology fun, right? And I was trying to do something very simple and I found videos on YouTube showing me how to do the thing. I wanted to delete a marker, but when I went to delete a marker, I didn't get the same options that they were showing in the videos. So I went to ChatGPT and I said, hey, I'm trying to do this. How do you do it? It gave me the same instructions. And then I said, I'm trying to do that, but the option to delete the marker is grayed out. What do I do? And it said, oh, that's probably a problem with your settings. Go here, do this, enable this, and you'll be able to do it. And so said, so done. I was able to get customized instructions based on exactly what I was trying to do. Now, I've been using AI over the last year. I can't believe it's been over a year already, but I've been using AI over the last year to do a bunch of different things. Let me give you some examples of what I've done. Strategic planning. I'm trying to figure out where to go in my business with certain aspects of my business. How do I do that? I've gotten guidance from AI tools. Um, planning out my content, whether it's you know coming up with the content ideas or outlines and even scripts in some cases, AI is helping me to accelerate that process. Writing music, the, the, the music videos that I'm writing, a lot of it starts with AI. I'm gonna go to AI and say, I wanna write a, 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 a rap song about uh, chromosomes and DNA. Can you give me some ideas of how it could sound, include such and such? And it's gonna do a pretty poor job it, for me personally, but there are certain things that it came up with that I'm like, ooh, I can use this. And I can go back and forth and then I can start the, 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 the wheels in my mind can start spinning and I can create songs much faster than ever because I have, I'm not going to say someone, but something there to help me along on this journey. Uh, uh, let's see, writer's block. You remember that thing that used to exist called writer's block? Well, it no longer exists for me. Why? Because whenever I have a block and I need some suggestions and some ideas, I can go into these tools and it can help me along the way. Repurposing my videos. When I'm finished with this, I'm gonna upload this video 
the video of this podcast to a service at opus.pro. And it is going to then uh, transcribe the entire thing and then look at what I've said and try to put together little clips that I can use as reels and TikTok videos and, and shorts on the different platforms. It's gonna add texts and emojis based on what I'm saying and, and make these clips that are pretty amazing that in some cases can be used just as, as, as is, or I might have to do some minor tweaks that's easy to use because AI is making it much easier. Um, Bible study. I study the Bible when I wake up in the morning. That's a personal thing. I've been doing it, hold on, according to my, my habit tracking app, I've been doing it every day for the last 380 days. I am studying the book of Ezekiel right now. And as I'm going through Ezekiel, there's a whole lot of stuff and symbolism and so on that when I read it, I don't fully understand. So what I do is, okay, I'm in chapter one. And chapter one, it talks about the imagery of this and that. What does that mean? And what are the interpretations out there on what that means? And then it will go through and explain that in detail. It'll give me the different perspectives that are out there. And that just enhances my Bible study in ways that I've never experienced before because it is helping to break it down for me in ways that make sense. One more, right? I had a close family member that got some lab tests done. They had some medical situations and they wanted to get my interpretation of what the lab results meant. So what did I do? I took the lab results. I uploaded it to ChatGPT and I asked ChatGPT, can you explain these lab results to me um, and what the implications are? And oh my word, it went through and gave me such a thorough and detailed explanation of all of the aspects. And if I didn't understand something, I would ask another question and it would give me more information. If it was too complicated, I can say, can you explain that as if you're explaining it to a five-year-old or a high school student, depending on how I'm trying to understand it. And as a result of that, we were able to have the medical consultation with the doctor and I was so much more informed and ready to ask relevant questions. I was empowered in that situation to deal with the medical professional in ways that I would not have been if it were not for these tools. I need to explain to you what I believe AI is really good at. AI is really good at many things, but one of those things, as it relates to what I'm talking about today, is parsing through large amounts of data in virtually no time. I can give it an entire book of data and ask it specific questions that I need answered in order to understand what's in that book, and it can do it within seconds. Do you understand the power that comes along with having access to those kinds of tools? It's, it is mind-blowing to me. And if it's not mind-blowing to you, then you're not paying attention. Now, I want to let you know that when it comes to AI, I do have concerns, and I'm going to address those concerns a little later on in this episode. So I'm not here saying AI is everything and everything we need to do should be AI and blah, blah. No, no. We, we, we got to be, we got to, we got to look at this from a holistic perspective. And that's what I'm going to try to attempt to do in this podcast. Now, let's set the scene a little bit more because we've got to talk about what's happened over the last year plus, maybe 11, uh, 12, 13, 14 months. Okay, so back in November of 2022, OpenAI launched ChatGPT for the public. And when they launched ChatGPT for the public, that thing took the world by storm. And here's what I mean. It got to 100 million users in just two months. Now, to give you a little bit of perspective, it took Facebook four and a half, four and a half years, Facebook, 
Facebook four and a half years to get to 100 million users. It took Twitter five years to get to 100 million users. Uh, it took Instagram a little over two years to get to 100 million users. And TikTok, I mean, TikTok was like a speed demon when it comes to growth. It took TikTok about nine months to get to 100 million users. But ChatGPT, it took ChatGPT a mere two months to get there. Obviously, ChatGPT did something that was useful for a lot of people. Now, in that same month, they launched DALI. And DALI is a platform where you can give it a text prompt and it can create images for you. And that was also pretty amazing, right? You want images in the past, you might have to buy them from a royalty-free site. But here, this is making uh, custom images from scratch. I mean, uh, when I say from scratch, it is, it, is, it is using what it's learned from consuming a bunch of data and a bunch of images to create something unique to the prompt that you gave it. Google then rushed because Google had been working on their AI platform, Bard, for, uh, for years. Uh, but because of everything that was happening, it was like, okay, we got to throw something out there. At least that's the way it seemed to me. So they put out Google Bard to the public, and now that is also what a dominant uh, 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 text, I mean, a, a dominant AI platform when it comes to content and answers and giving you giving text prompts and it giving you responses. Uh, then Claude was launched in March of 2023. Along with Google launched in March of 23, Bard. Claude, that's by the company Anthropic, and that was launched in 2023. And Claude was interesting in that it was very similar, it is very similar to ChatGPT, but it could, it could take a lot more text than uh, ChatGPT. And quite frankly, I'm finding in some cases that Claude does a much better job at giving me content than ChatGPT does, which is pretty cool. Midjourney was launched in 2022. And now, and Midjourney is a text-to-image platform that's even better than DALI, where people are creating realistic and amazing images. You want to uh, write a, a, a children's storybook? Well, in the past, you needed to get an illustrator, and that could be extremely pricey. Now, you can do it using Midjourney, in some cases, for free, and get really high-quality image. Listen. The developments that have happened over the last year plus are amazing. And today, there are over 60,000 AI-focused companies that are out there, with about 15,000 of those being in the U.S. alone. Yo, this, is been, this has been a crazy year when it comes to AI. And if you follow anyone that is like keeping up on the news with AI, you'll see that there's news happening every single day. Something is breaking, uh, like breaking news, not like breaking as in we're breaking it. But there's so much happening right now in this world. Now, the question is, where are things going? And I don't think there's a way to accurately predict exactly where things are going to be. But here are some of my thoughts. Here are some of my thoughts on where things are going. Number one, I believe going into 2024 and beyond, what we're going to start to see is that AI is going to be baked into a lot of the services that we use to make it easier. So let me give you an example. Uh, last week, I published a podcast episode. I needed a picture to go along with it with some text on the screen. I had a picture from a photo shoot I had done with my family, and the picture was awesome, but it wasn't wide enough. I needed, when I put it into Photoshop and I, I expanded the canvas for the size that I needed, there was just white space on the left. And then I saw this AI built in where I can select that area, click on generative fill and give it a text prompt. And I said something like, extend the picture to the left. And you know what that thing did? <laughs> Within seconds. It, the bricks that was on the floor, it carried the bricks on, it added chairs, it added plants and all of that stuff, and it looked as if it was there when I took the picture. Now, 
I am not good at Photoshop, but I can describe what I want. And now because AI is built into Photoshop, within seconds, I can do things that it would have taken a, a professional to do, but I don't need the professional anymore because of the AI built into the tool. And it, it wasn't called AI when I looked at it. It was called a generative fill. I believe that that is a model for what is going to happen. There are going to be features that all of a sudden now we're able to do using technology. And the reason we're able to do it is because of the AI that's built in on the back end. And I think that that's an amazing thing because it allows us to do so much more with so much less. Right now, we are in a hype cycle. Everybody's talking about AI, AI this, AI that, AI that. But I believe that hype circle, cycle is eventually going to die down. And what we're going to be left with are just useful tools that empower us to do things that would have taken a lot more time in the past in order for us to do and significantly more expertise. It's like, when I first learned about website um, design and setup, I, I learned about HTML. I took a computer tools class, and if I wanted to add an image, I remember I had to add some code, and it had to be IMG space SRC equals, and then I had to use HT, I mean FTP to upload a picture, and then I had to get the, the URL of that pic picture, and then put that into the code, and close the, 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 the quotation marks, and, and the brackets, and all this kind of stuff, and eventually I would get this picture added. But then WordPress came along, and WordPress made it so that all I needed to do was upload, and the image was there and it was added to the page. It's a beautiful thing. What will AI allow us to do in the future that right now it takes so much in order to do? There are also practical things, practical uses, not just in terms of content and website stuff, but, but in our everyday lives. Uh, you know, let's talk about the medical field, for example. Doctors. In many cases, doctors and nurses are overworked and extremely stressed out. And they're seeing patients all throughout the day. And a patient is in front of the doctor right now, and that doctor has to go back in his brain at the thing that he learned in medical school, the experiences that he had and so on, but he's tired. And, and oftentimes you get a low level of care because the doctor is just tired. I believe that AI, not I believe, AI is already helping out in those situations. For example, there are stethoscopes that are AI enhanced. And those stethoscopes, when they monitor your heart, uh, when they're listening to the heart, it can analyze what is happening with the sounds of your heart, the activity of your heart, and compare it to the, the vast amount of information out there and give you additional insight into what's going on with that patient. And the AI doesn't get tired. What does that do? It enables the doctor to do a better job at providing care to those patients. It also, there, there are cases right now, because I, the reason this is fresh in my mind is because I put together a pitch for a, a, a TV segment, a news segment on this, but there are, are uh, 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 cardiologists right now that are using AI tools to be able to more accurately and quickly determine when a heart attack is going to happen and use preventative measures before it happens. And that affects lives, literally. Once again, AI is great at parsing through large bits of data, making correlations, and feeding you information that gives you better insight into what's going on. And, and for us as content creators, it gives me better tools to be able to create the content that I want to create to provide value to my audience. A lot of investment is happening in the field of AI right now. And a lot of productivity is happening in this field. Okay, so that's AI. Now, 
I know you're probably thinking, wait, let's see. The title of this episode was Blogging is Dead. Blogging as we know it is dead thanks to AI. So let's talk about blogging. We got to talk about blogging. Blogging is something that I've been passionate about for a long time because blogging allows people like you and I to create content, put that content out there, provide value to the world, get exposure for our businesses, make money, feed our families, all that good jazz. I've been blogging actively since 2008 and I've been teaching blogging. This podcast used to be called Blogging with Leslie. My website used to be, used to be called becomeablogger.com because of how much I believe in it and because of how much I believe that individuals like you and I can have such a massive impact on the world if we just create content and put it out there. But over the years, a lot, have cha- has, a lot of things have changed. Organic traffic from the search engines, that's on a steep decline. Why? Well, you go to Google, you do a search for something. What happens? In the past, you used to get a list of websites. Now, what do you get? Yes, you get a bunch of ads. But then you also get Google trying to answer your questions, making it so that you don't even have to visit the websites. In in fact, the websites are pushed down. So you don't see the websites immediately. And let me ask you this. If you just did a Google search and you got an answer, do you need to go to a website? So a lot of content creators are seeing website traffic, organic traffic from Google going down. So that's point number one. Not only is organic sites, uh, organic traffic from Google and and the search engines going down. um, uh, Oh, actually, on that note, now Google is also using AI in the search results. And it will give you a complete answer that's from their generative AI, making it even less likely that you're gonna visit the websites. And yeah, they might link to the websites in the, 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 the bottom and say, hey, these are the references and the places that we got it, but you don't need to visit the websites if you got your answer. So I believe we're gonna continue to see our Google organic, our organic search traffic going down significantly as we go into the future. Let's talk about the social platforms. Back in the days, you could post something on social media, on Facebook, and and so on, and the people that like your page, they're going to click through and go and visit your site, and now you're getting a bunch of traffic from the the, the social media sites. How's that working now? Not well at all, right? You could be engaging your audience. Your audience could be, like, so into what you're doing, and then you post a link. Crickets. Why? Because the algorithms are making it so that links are being suppressed. And people aren't seeing your stuff anymore. So organic search traffic going down. Social traffic going down as well. Blogging, quite frankly, is going down. The importance of blogging is decreasing. And the purpose of blogging, I believe we're going to start to see a significant shift in that. Here's what I mean. Back in the days, if you had a business... One thing that you needed to have was a business card. If you went and you connected with someone and and they're like, man, I I like what you do. I need to find out more. What do you do? You give them your business card. Your business card is that thing that gets them to call you, that gets them to do business with you. Over time, the purpose of the business card got less and less. Why? Because we had websites, we had social media platforms, and we started to see that Business cards were, are no longer as emphasized as they used to be. I believe the same thing is going to happen with blogging. And it's not that they're not going to be important, but the purpose of blogging is going to change. And this is why I say blogging as we know it is dead thanks to AI. I believe that blogging, as we go more into the future, as AI takes a stronger hold... I don't believe that blogging is going to be that way that we get a lot of people to check out our stuff. That's not going to be that we, uh, the, the way we attract people to us. Instead, I believe that once people are attracted to what we do, we can then send them to our blogs to get additional resources. So it's still relevant, and we still have the resources available for people to check out, 
But that is no longer going to be the way they find us. That's going to be the way that we help to solidify that relationship. So yes, blogging as we know it, I, I can't see how it's going to continue in that way. It's going to serve a purpose, but that purpose is going to change. So that's a lot of stuff, right? Okay, blogging is going down. AI is on the rise. You and I aren't going to start our own chat GPTs, although you could do um, GPTs and so on. And that's a topic for a completely different um, episode. And I will dig into that in a later episode. But the question is, what do we do? Everything is changing. Yes, I get it. But what am, are you and I supposed to do? And that's what I want to talk about next. But before I do that, I want to do a, 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 a little plug for our sponsor. And that is Ecamm Live. Let me tell you, I'm recording this episode right now. At the beginning, I hit record. I have multiple cameras. I'm going to switch between those cameras. I'm going to do that here live on the spot. I'm going to add in the audio. I'm going to add in animations and so on. I brought this up on the screen to show you that you can go to ecamcom slash Leslie and save 15%. Now, when I am done, I am done. I am not editing this. I had a friend, a very good friend that has been into video production, video for a online video for a very long time. He reached out to me after seeing one of my podcast episodes and he said, dude, do you have an entire team that's producing this thing for you? What are you doing? Are you spending like a bunch of time editing this and putting all the shots together and so on? This looks amazing. You know what I told him? Nah, dude, I'm just using Ecamm Live. And I'm, I have a switcher here and I just do my switching and I bring things up on the screen. If I want to tell you to follow me on, on YouTube, I can say go ahead and hit subscribe and tap that bell notification icon and that animation just popped up on the screen. That is because of Ecamm Live and that is what Ecamm allows you to do. Professional video, whether you're going live or it's pre-recorded without having to do a bunch of editing and in my case, without needing a team. There's no team. There is just me and we are making this happen. You can use ecamcom slash Leslie and save 15%. If you are on a Mac, because it is Mac only, I highly recommend Ecamm Live for you and all your video production needs. Okay, on that note, let's get into what this means for us. Like, what do we do as a result of that? What is left if blogging is no longer what it used to be? What is left? Here's the good news. What is left is what, is what has always been a core tenant of what we do. What is left is trust. I am creating content. I am putting that out there on the internet. I am going where people are. And this is what you should be doing. You should be creating content that builds trust and doing that consistently. You should be creating content that builds community. Because you know what? AI can't take those things away. If I trust you, I'm going to come to you when I want to learn about your specific industry. I got to do this. Hold on. I, 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 I thought about this yesterday and I didn't pull this up. So I'm going to pull it up right now. And in my pulling it up, I'm not going to share my screen because I don't want you to see the names of the people. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to my YouTube channel. I'm actually using Agora Pulse to see all of the comments that were left on my YouTube channel. And I'm just going to randomly go through and pick from the most recent comments. So I see one comment. Thank you. That was clear and easy. Our body uh, uh, and especially Im immunity is amazing. Thanks a lot for clearing my doubt. Man, you are too good. Well done. Thank you so much, kind sir, sir. I was really lacking on this concept of the cardiac cycle. This video made it a lot easier. You've helped me with anatomy and now microbiology. Amazing. I'm not like skipping through a bunch of stuff. I'm just sharing the, the most recent comments. Thank you. This is very easy to understand. You are one of the best teachers I've ever heard. Such a good teacher. Thank you for saving me hours of studying by breaking down these concepts so well. The, uh, let's see. Uh, that's not relevant. I can't believe I am dancing to knowledge. 
<laughs> this is next level. Keep it up. Love from Sri Lanka. Oh my goodness. This, y'all are adorable, smart, and fun. Thank you for your enthusiastic contribution to education. Uh, let's see any more comments. Really enjoyed this energetic video. Do you see what's happening here? Um, my music videos. I, I'm going to be singing this all day. I'm about to take a final exam and this is just what I needed. What am I doing here? Yes, I'm creating videos. Yes, I'm putting them out there on YouTube. And as a result, people are finding value in that content and they are coming to trust me as a source of information when it comes to biology. AI cannot take that away because I'm sharing from my Heart. I'm sharing from my knowledge. I'm sharing my expertise. I'm making it fun. I'm putting it out there and it is helping people. I am serving and there's nothing AI can do to take that away. But in order to do that, I need to be where those people are and I need to provide them value. So I highly recommend for you to focus on creating content where people are. And I highly recommend for you to focus on doing it in video form. And some of you are going to hear that and you're going to be like, oh, but I don't want to be on, on camera and this and that. Listen, listen, that ship has sailed. If you want to have an impact online, you got to do it using video. Not just that, but by doing that, that makes it so that you can repurpose your content in so many ways. As I mentioned, I'm put, posting this video on YouTube. Then I have the audio, and the audio is going to be in Apple Podcasts. It's going to be on Spotify. It's going to be on all of the, uh, the podcasting platforms that you can listen to wherever you are. In addition to that, I'm going to pull out clips from this. I'm going to use Opus.pro. It's going to pull out these shorts and reels, and I can post that on other platforms to bring people to my content. It's, there's so much I can do with this. I can repurpose it um, using AI, uh, get a transcript, and have it automatically write articles for me so that I can embed it on my blog, and I have the video, and I have the, the written stuff, and all. Listen, this, we live in an amazing time right now, and if we're not taking advantage of that, that's on us. That, if you're not taking advantage of that, that's on you. Yeah. Yeah. So, create content where the people are. Focus on video. Repurpose that content on, on different platforms. Learn about AI. AI is the new frontier. Don't sit on the sidelines, you know, wondering if this is kind of a here today, gone tomorrow situation. No, it's here. It's here, and it's going to change things as we move forward. And as you're doing all of this, and this is one thing that has never changed, and I'm so glad it has not changed, focus on growing your email list. As all of the changes have been happening when it comes to organic reach and social reach, the clients of mine that are having the most success are those that focus on growing their email list. Because yes, you may not be able to access your, your followers and share links with them as readily as you used to um, on the social platforms, but if they've subscribed to your email list, you can connect with them that way and give them exactly what you want to give them in that process. So use social platforms to grow your email list. Uh, we did a session yesterday on how to use short form video to, to, to get people to buy and to do all those kinds of things. And one of the platforms that was mentioned is ManyChat. ManyChat is such a great tool for doing something like posting a reel on Instagram or on Facebook and saying, giving valuable information and saying, hey, if you wanna go even further, I have this free resource, comment guide below, and I'll send it to you. And ManyChat will automatically send the, 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 the resource to them, uh, the link, so that they can go and sign up to your email list. Such a valuable tool, and we need to be taking advantage of that. Let's talk about concerns. And we're gonna wrap things up after the concerns. I have a lot of concerns about AI. You know, a lot of people are com uh, concerned that AI will replace us. I don't have that concerns. Um, there's a line that I heard some, somewhere on Twitter 
I read somewhere on Twitter, AI won't replace humans, but humans with AI will replace humans without AI. <laughs> now, that's a bit, it's a little extreme, but I believe that there's some validity there because if I'm using AI to help me to do what I do so much faster and so much better, that gives me a competitive advantage against someone that's not using it. So my concern is not it replacing us. It, I don't think AI is going to replace me. But I believe that we can become overly dependent on AI uh, to a point where it becomes inauthentic. I've teaching, taught, I've teaching. What's teaching? What's, that's not even a word. But I've taught people about AI and seen people do amazing things. And then I've seen some that use AI for everything. And you can tell that everything that they post is not even them. It's the AI. And what does that do? It erodes trust. Because it's no longer you doing the stuff. It doesn't even sound like you. That's inauthentic. And I can't trust you. And if I can't trust you, I'm not doing business with you. I'm not going to connect with you. I'm not going to engage with you. Because I might as well engage with an AI bot. Because that's exactly what I'd be doing. So don't be that person. I'm concerned about the impact of AI in schools. I believe, I mean, let's be real, yo. When I was in high school, if you gave me a paper, uh, an assignment to do, I had to write a paper, and AI existed back then, in the mindset that I had back then, I would have so used AI to write those papers for me. <laughs> That's just being real. That's not right. But I know myself as a child, and I know I would have done it. So I believe it's important as educators for us to be proactive about determining how to effectively use AI and how to prepare our students for the world to come, for the way things are going, because they need to have that competitive advantage. And unless we, unless we take leadership roles in showing them how to do this responsibly, I don't think we're setting them up for success. Don't try to replace yourself with AI. Use AI to enhance your productivity and output. I want to talk a lot more about my concerns with AI, but I think I'm going to leave some of that for a later episode because this one is getting long. I, I, I was too excited. I was just too excited. But we're going to talk a little more about... Now, we're going to talk a lot more about AI moving forward because... I do believe that we're at a, 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 a point in time where so much can change for us individually and as a whole. And it's up to us to determine how we respond to, uh, th hey, this is exactly what we started the episode with, right? It came full circle. How we respond to what is happening in the world right now. Do we like the ostrich or whatever the birds are that dig their head under the sand? I don't want to see it. No, this is all crazy. And no, we can't do that. It's up to us. It's up to us to fully take advantage of the resources. And the world needs more good people like you to use these tools in a responsible way. Yeah, there are people that are gonna use it negatively and there are all kinds of bad things and deep fakes and so on that can happen as a result of people using it negatively. But you, you, you're a good person and we need people like you to use this well. What are your thoughts? Let me know. Go to IamLessieSamuel.com slash 401 for episode 401 and give me your thoughts. But my name is Leslie Samuel from IamLessieSamuel.com where we're changing the world one blog at a time. That's it for this episode. Take care and God bless. Da, da.